it was actually an advertisement on the cover of Publishers Weekly in the 90s that said the internet was built with O'Reilly books and gen generally people feel that that was true. And uh, actually one of the things that uh, I did in that period is something that I want to talk with you a little bit about later today, which was to help train people in developing countries on how to set up internet sites. Um, you know, obviously, as mentioned, we also do conferences like the Open Source Convention, the Web2O Expo, the Gov2O events. And this idea of changing the world by spreading the knowledge of innovators is really central to my company. Because I, I, I looked at the history of all the technology innovation that I've been involved in, and I realized that it was a pattern. And the pattern was that innovation happened in some unexpected ways. It didn't actually come uh, through the traditional channels. It wasn't uh, venture capitalists uh, identifying big new trends and opportunities. It was people having fun and, and the future actually being discovered by people who were just playing with technology because they loved it. And you see that today, to be quite honest, in your world, if there's one you know, uh, site to study would be something like Afrogadget. You know, it's like where where are people just kind of pushing the boundaries and just doing cool stuff because they can? And we've seen this again and again. Uh, if you look back at the history of, say, human-powered flight, uh, the Wright brothers didn't think, oh, we're going to build an airline. We're going to have you know a business. They just said, wow, it would be cool to fly. Um, and the same thing is true of the early days of the personal computer industry. Uh, people in the homebrew computer club thought, how cool it would be to have my own computer. Now, some of them went on to become entrepreneurs. I've actually been using the image of innovation as a, as a, a four-stroke engine. Uh, parallels aren't exact because uh, the cylinders don't necessarily all go you know, neatly in the same order. But first one is this idea of just pursuing innovation for its own sake, for the love of it. The second is uh, uh, starting actually to think about changing the world. It's not actually even there, uh, the sort of, the kind of stuff that you see in Silicon Valley. You know, the really great companies are ones that think big thoughts. And they don't actually, some of them are entrepreneurs, uh, but some of them aren't even then. Uh, you know, when Microsoft said a computer on every, in every home and on every desk, uh, that was not sort of kind of an obvious thing to believe in. And it was a really bold thing for this scraggly bunch of kids uh, to believe in. And when Larry and Sergey at Google said, we're going to provide access to all the world's information, you know, they were sitting on top of a startup that nobody else believed in. You know, search engines were kind of, eh, uh, that, that, that's a model that didn't work. Uh, so they weren't coming from, oh, we're going to make our fortune. They were coming from, we're going to make a difference. And then, of course, you have the people who do build and scale companies, and that, that really works. And the fourth part of the cycle, which is a really, really important one that I've been uh, trying to focus people on is the idea that if you really want to keep innovation going, you actually have to create value for an entire ecosystem. Uh, and what I've noticed again and again in technology cycles, there comes a time when companies start to take more out of the ecosystem than they put in. We saw this, for example, with Microsoft in the early days. Their growth came because they were creating a market. Uh, the personal computer was going everywhere. And uh, Microsoft went with it. And there were opportunities for thousands of, of uh, small application developers on the PC platform. At some point, the growth slowed. And Microsoft started to take more value out of the ecosystem than they created. And I think we're seeing this today, uh, that transformation with the World Wide Web. You know, some of the big companies are starting to say, hmm, you know, we just need to eat this other guy's lunch in order to keep growing. You know, they're no longer focused on uh, just creating new value. They're figuring out how they're going to apportion the pie by 
taking value away from somebody else in the ecosystem. And, I, and maybe that's an inevitable part of the cycle, but it's something to be aware of. So I just say a, a, a backdrop um, for what I'm go going to say. Uh, we are in a, a, a time of transformation uh, for technology where some movements that have been incredibly vital are becoming less so. And there's new technologies on the horizon. We're moving from the web era into the mobile era in a very, very powerful way. Uh, but we also have to ask ourselves, are there characteristics of that era uh, that we are, are, that are going to be positive for innovation uh, versus uh, close it down? And I want to talk a little bit about uh, what I think are some of the conditions that make for healthy uh, ecosystems. So what I really want to 